सो हाई फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू एयरक्राफ्ट डिजाइन कोर्स मॉड्यूल सिक्स फ्यूजलाज डिजाइन ऑफ एन एयरक्राफ्ट आफ्टर द विंग फ्यूजलाज इज एन सेकेंड इम्पोर्टेंट एयरक्राफ्ट कॉम्पोनेंट विच हेल्प टू एकोमोडेट क्रू पैसेंजर पेलोड कार्गो पैकेजेस लैंडिंग गियर एक्सेट्रा इन दिस मॉड्यूल यू विल लर्न द प्रोसेस ऑफ डिजाइन ऑफ एन फ्यूजलाज एंड डिजाइन थर्म रूल बेस्ड ऑन ऑपरेशन रिक्वायरमेंट नव फ्यूज लैच कॉन्फिग्रेशन एंड इट्स इंटरनल अरेन्जमेंट लाइक कॉकपिट डिजाइन इंजिन डिजाइन कैबिन डिजाइन लेंथ ऑफ द कैबिन नो स्कोन लेंथ ऑफ द रेयर फ्यूज लैच फाइनली टोटल लेंथ ऑफ द फ्यूज लैच ऑफ योर एयरक्राफ्ट एंड टू सेटिस्फाई द डिजाइन रिक्वायरमेंट बाई मीन्स ऑफ फाइनेंस रेशियो फाइनेंस रेशियो प्लेज एन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल वेल डिजाइनिंग एंड फ्यूज लैच It is a ratio between the length of the fuselage to the diameter of the fuselage. Once satisfied, so go ahead with the next component. If not, then revise and check the error. So stay tuned till the end of the video to learn and implement in your design. Any design begins with an requirement and its own purpose. Accordingly, designer need to compress it into a single unit. considering mainly cargo aircraft fighter passenger aircraft and most challenging task there is to design and satisfy the design requirement for the passenger if the airplane transport people sufficiently internal space should be available and to go to the lavatory emergency exit in case of emergency more than 44 passengers and above so step 1 is to collect the existing aircraft data based on the operational requirement like speed range number of passengers length height width fineness ratio based on your aircraft additional parameters may be added or needed so this is the data collected based on 440 seater passenger aircraft so the study about the fuselage arrangements in details aerodynamic shape configurations So the aerodynamic task for a fuselage shaping is to minimize the drag and pitching moment for the volume required to accommodate the required items like crew passengers depending upon whether it is an civil or a military aircraft so aerodynamic design must not only to minimize parasite drag and also to extract uh, as much amount of lift as possible as an additional bonus but simultaneously also it helps to reduce the pitching moment so fuselage should be made as a streamline as possible the fuselage is responsible for a large percentage of overall drag of an aircraft about 25 to 50 percentage since it is desirable to have an little drag as possible accordingly size and shape so some gliders and the light aircrafts operating at low renolds number aft of the cabin the volume of a fuselage narrows to a near tube like aft end this favors the extension of laminar flow over a smooth surface having an high lift to drag ratio that is aerodynamic efficiency one more factor for pressurization point of view most efficient cross section from a structural view point is the circular cross section helps to reduce the hoop stress as you can see the high subsonic commercial transport aircraft fuselage section is basically a circular or a non circular constant cross sectional tube with a blunt front end and tapered aft rear fuselage all the fuselage have some tapper so some tapper is called as an upswept angle for an aircraft rotational clearance the time of take off now designer must be configure a satisfactory the geometry which will give an attention to all the operations and structural requirement Now the swept angle is applied to an aircraft at an rear fuselage to reduce the lateral oscillation problem leads to reduce the drag. 
Now one more category is the blended body, which is a near to an circular but not circular, which helps to provide a greater internal volume, aerodynamic and structural efficiency, noise reduction, maximum overall efficiency by integrating the propulsion system wing and the body into a single lifting surface which helps to more than 20 percentage aerodynamic efficiency as a table displayed based on your aircraft design you can compare and select the parameters or pick the parameters for your design like it's a ratio between the rear length of the rear fuselage to the diameter of the fuselage and the second one is the upswept angle so based on this parameters you can pick the right value for your aircraft design in case of fighter and trainer the requirement for good visibility from the cockpit point of view plays a very dominant role that first second is a canopy shaping canopy shaping can improve the profile drag of an aircraft so larger the finest ratio increase the drag so your design must be optimized accordingly brief study about the internal arrangements now uh, when the interior arrangements is determined it comes under the cockpit cabin design nose length cabin length rear fuse length of the fuselage that depends on the modes of operational requirement now each aircraft having its own operational requirements when we talk about the passenger aircraft the interior design reflects a promising result or level of comforts when we talk about the fighter the fighter operates to pack all the required missiles guns weapons into a single unit then when we talk about the cargo operations it has the ability to efficient loading and unloading and transportation point of view so in addition you have to consider in the cargo that the number of pallets or a cargo containers and the number of load master to be considered now we will see each subtopics part by part so based on the aircraft types the geometry of the cockpit is an important part of a fuselage design in case of more than 10000 km flight the pilot and the co-pilot must feel comfortable and have the opportunity to move around based on the internal setup of the cockpit the space between the seat the throttle control or some other instruments vary from aircraft to aircraft as you can see it's a comparing data between fighter and the passenger aircraft this is for the small aircraft this is for sailplane and this is a special category as a tandem type in the tandem type mostly used for the military trainer aircraft where the it depend the size depends on the design and the number of passenger requirements are accommodated in that particular flight so uh, being a design engineer you are not going to customize avionic systems or anything so you just need to consider the type of cockpit and its dimension and its layout then moving to an cabin design for an passenger aircraft the cabin design consists of passenger arrangements in various sorts starting with a galley first class seat tourist seat cabin crew seat then lavatory doors front door rear door then so based on the federal aviation regulations having the following requirements to satisfy the cabin design as cabin seat width seat width is the size of the seat aisle width an aisle width must be wide enough to walk up and down without disturbing the passenger seat aisle height aisle height is a height from the floor to the cabin ceiling headroom it is an average human standing height now coming to the pitch the space of leg room in an aircraft cabin from based on this fir data chart you can pick the right values for your aircraft large passenger aircraft should have at least one lavatory per 50 passengers and one galley galley is a place where they store food during flight one galley per 100 passengers 
now before proceeding to the design it there is one more important thing to understand about the abreast for a narrow and wide body aircraft abreast is an number of seats aligned side by side okay in an one row and wide body when we call when they have 7 to 10 seats aligned side by side in a row so each having its advan own advantages and disadvantages here we are not going to focus about its advantages and disadvantages so we'll look into more deep when they have the passengers less than 19 passengers we use two abreast then when the passenger ranges between 20 to 45 we use three abreast then 45 to 80 passengers we use four abreast now 85 to 135 abreast 120 to 236 abreast the seven abreast is used when the passengers ranging about 160 to 260 eight abreast for 250 to 380 nine abreast 350 to 480 and 10 abreast when we have more than 400 or 500 and above so basically the wide body configurations ranging for the when it start with 160 passengers and above it start with a wide body aircraft so uh, designer must evaluate the length of the fuselage and the other specifications like fitness ratio and all so a designer must evaluate the length of the fuselage and other specifications and they must satisfy the design and check whether this design is desirable or not uh, length of the fuselage can be found usually by length of the nose section plus length of the cabin plus the length of the rear section. Now cabin can length of the cabin can vary for aircraft to aircraft. Maybe for cargo it will vary the length of the cargo and in case of fighter it will be depending on the engine length. This parameters vary from aircraft to aircraft. It is displayed in a table. For an example of 440 aircraft it will be under wide body aircraft configuration where passenger are seated with an nine abreast side by side so as you can understand since it is ranging from 440 i will choose for the nine abreast so based on the research it says that the diameter of the fuselage should be ranging between five to seven meter first let's calculate the number of lavatory required so uh, as we know that at least one lavatory per 50 passengers so 450 divided by 50 we will get around 8 to 9 8 point something so we will consider that we must have a 9 lavatory then coming to the next is a galley galley as per the far they said one galley per 100 passengers so we have 440 passengers divided by 100 we get as four point something so we will take as a five galley so based on our design requirement here we have chosen for our aircraft that number of abreast is nine now number of cities we have around four 40 now in my design i will show you that i have kept around 35 seats for a first class and remaining around 405 seats for a tourist class so and the seat width i have differentiated from the first class with the uh, tourist and number of aisles is two and uh, seat width i have chosen from based on far i have chosen as 54 centimeter next was Pitch, seat pitch. Seat pitch is a distance between the uh, one seat to another seat from the side view or we can call as a leg room. So each leg room I have considered in two cases. One is a 92 and 76 and I will evaluate and I will finally choose the best one after finding the finest ratio. So, so these are my data which I have initially chosen from the FAR table. Now, we will calculate the fuselage diameter first. Now how to calculate the fuselage diameter? Now based on the collecting data, we are going to find out the fuselage design, fuselage diameter. Now how to find the fuselage diameter? It is the, the number of seat into the size or the width of seat okay, plus number of aisle into the number of aisle width so by adding all those parameters we will get the cabin width 
now in addition we need to find out the cabin diameter so you can see in the figure uh, that um, there will be some clearance from the side at the near to the window side till the outside so the distance between them or the clearance we consider nearly about 10 to 15 centimeter each so let me here consider the 10 centimeter from each side so whatever i got in cabin width that is 90 into 50 plus 2 into 54 that is 558 plus 20 to for 10 clearance from each so we will get around 58 578 centimeter so 578 centimeter is my maximum fuselage diameter so now we will find the length of the fuselage before proceeding to the length of the fuselage length of the fuselage is a combination of length nose length plus cabin length and the rear length so first here we will find the nose length and the rear rear length so nose length and the rear length depends on the diameter of the fuselage here you can see the chart based on the sitting abreast so we can choose the nose length ratio and the rear length ratio nose length ratio is the ratio between the uh, nose length to the diameter of the fuselage and rear length ratio is the rear length of an aircraft to the diameter of the fuselage so based on the abreast selection you can see we have the abreast around 9 so greater than 9 we will choose a nose length to be 1.5 to 1.7 and rear length ratio to 2.5 to 3.75 so let's considering the list value for our design requirement so nose length to be uh, coming to about 8.67 meter so by multiplying this and rear length consider 2.5 that is 2.5 multiplying 7578 around 14.30 meter now we have got the nose length and the rear length now uh, one more consideration is there was a nose cone angle now nose cone angle is this one as you can see here now let's consider the nose cone angle is an alpha so uh, taking the geometric properties of this triangle so this is forming like a triangle so this is the diameter complete diameter of the fuselage and this is the rear length which we have both the value now we need to find out the semi nose cone angle so using this formula we can find the semi nose cone angle from there we can find out the total nose cone angle as 22.62 if you see the range it is lying within this proper limit coming to the next was a cabin length now cabin length can be found using the arrangements you have done within the cabin or the interior decorations interior design you have done in your cabin so based on the locations of the galley based on the locations of your lavatory containers uh, store and um, the alignments of the passengers for the tourists and for the first class so based this is my design for and 440 passengers and i have used nine lavatory and five amount of galley and few storage systems so here you can see there are nine lavatory one two three four five six seven eight nine nine lavatory galley this one one two three four and five galley and these are the 35 amounts of uh, my first class and remaining 405 for the economy tourist so here are the alignments three plus three plus three this is the alignments right and this is for the first class two plus two plus two and here i have taken two cases one is the pitch is 92 and pitch is 76 based on that i will find my length of the cabin so the length of the cabin can be calculated to the product of number rows by the seat pitch and the length of the lavatory into the number of lavatory aligned into the galley position of doors and etc as per the standard rule the length of the galley and the lavatory is 36 inch that is 92 centimeter and the door width of the aircraft is 107 centimeter and 6 feet tall according to our design the number of row is 51 and uh, pitch is varying in two cases and the best one we will opt for our design 
and now in addition we will see the number of lavatory based on this following formula we can put it starting from here both the lavatory and the galley galley lie in the same line so we'll consider the lavatory one then next here also same thing we will consider the lavatory one two then three then four so four amount of lavatory into the dimension of the lavatory then comes with the second is a galley number of galley here this one alone so this one number of galley is 1 into 92 plus 2 doors 2 exit doors okay 1 and 2 so 2 into 107 and when we substitute we get as 674 here so a uh, number of row is 51 into the sit pitch sit pitch for two cases one is for 92 and second is for 76 now by applying in this form we get for cabin length for at 92 is 53.66 and at 76 we get as 45.5 now uh, putting substituting back in the fuse latch length that is cabin length plus nose plus the rear so we get at the 92 we get 76.63 meter and in case of 76 uh seat pitch we get 68.47 meter now uh, here we will find out in the form of finest ratio now after finding the finest ratio finest ratio is a ratio between the length of the fuselage total length of the fuselage by the diameter of the fuselage so at the point of 92 at the point of 76 now we will get here is uh, in case of 92 13.3 and in case of 76 we get is 11.85 now comparing this data with uh, my previous optimized data where i got around 11.75 so here i will choose the nearest value that is uh, when the seat pitch is 76 and the slender fitness ratio is 11.85 if the value of the fuel slash to the diameter ratio is not up to the mark then again you need to iterate the cabin design by changing the modifying the dimensions of the seat and the pitch width now i will give you a the brief, brief intro about the cargo fighter and the small aircraft fuel slash design now suppose you are designing a cargo aircraft of payload about 45400 kg Let's consider the cargo container used is LD3. As you can see from we have some certain FAR standard pallets and the containers. From there I have selected cargo containers for my this cargo is LD3. Hmm? Now whose breadth of the container is 2 meter and length is 1.5 meter. And the depth is 1.62 meter volume of one container is around 4.3 meter cube and weight of an individual container is 1588 kg now from here we can calculate the number of containers required now total number of payload by the weight of an one container that is 45400 divided by 1588 around 28.589 containers so as per the cargo arrangements two columns of 15 containers along the fuselage so uh, from here we can find the width of the fuselage fuselage is the twice the width of the ld3 plus some twice the clearance both the side clearance so usually the clearance value they consider around 0.7 to 1 meter so let me consider here as 0.7 meter each side so the width of the ld is around 2 meter so 2 into 2 plus 1.4 both the side clearance equals to we get as width about 5.4 meter now coming to an number of cargo containers so number of uh, pallets rows will be 15 because 14 plus 1 extra now into the length of the container plus a bulk cargo so usually the bulk cargo usually taken around 3.5 to 4 meter so here i will consider as a 4 meter so 15 into 1.5 to 3 into plus plus 4 
we get as 26.95 meter is a length of the cargo now to find out the total length of the fuselage equals to nose length plus cargo length plus rear length now similar fashion like how we have found for an passenger aircraft similar fashion we will take the nose length ratio and the rear length ratio so nose length ratio is 1.5 and the rear length ratio is 2.5 now if i have taken such ratios and when i'm applying in this formula we get around 48.55 meter that is my total length of the fuselage for this cargo aircraft now here from here we need to find out the fitness ratio now fitness ratio as you know the length of the fuselage by the diameter of the fuselage that is 48.55 by 5.4 coming around 9 9.0 you have to check with your comparative data study or the optimized value which you have done for your analysis beginning of your analysis so if it is not you have to revise it okay this is how you calculate the cargo fuselage for your cargo aircraft coming to the next is a fighter aircraft measuring the length of the fuselage for an fighter aircraft from the tip of the nose cone to the engine exit plane most of the fighter aircraft having an carriage of weapons like gun bombs missiles right etc the two types of conf aerodynamic configuration of an fighter aircraft this is a old one and the modern one so as you can see a modern one we have the s duct system okay and also a stealth technology so one of the most military applicant is an weapon carriage which includes the gun bombs and missiles basically of four types of weapon carriages one is a is the external one semi submerged this is a internal and this is a conformal so based on your design requirement you have to choose the right layout coming to the next length of your fighter aircraft basically the length of the fighter aircraft determines based on the engine selection engine selection and the bay of weapons this one is the equipment compartment and this zone as you can see three three is a rotary type bomber carriage door so here we will have the bombers based on the type of aircrafts and this 11 point you can see is 11 point is for the ferry bay compartment based on the number of missiles you are using based on the size of the each missiles and based on the alignments how you keeping on your fuselage based on certain parameters your length of the fuselage will be determined there are few suggestions for fuselage sizing for single engine or gliders or other airplanes so first choose the length of the fuselage to the span from the data collections optimize it and uh, recalling the span length of your wing that you have obtained from your wing design now first estimate your initial length of the fuselage using this formula length of the fuselage into the wing span into the optimized data for an ratio of length of the fuselage to the span now from there obtain the size of the obtain the length of the fuselage okay second category if you have engine engine has been tentatively chosen based on the engine selection now hence the length of the find out the length of the engine and the width of the engine okay based on the sources now length of the engine compartment is equal to the 1.5 of the length of the engine and the width of the engine compartment equals to 1.2 into the width of the engine so you will have the length of the engine compartment with a fine tuning after designing of an engine mounted so this is how you design the structural design of a fuselage but in case of agricultural airplane the length of the tank carrying the pesticides can be included in the cabin so that also you have to make a note of it in case of trainer planes the accommodation for the trainee how the trainee are seated side by side or a tandem arrangement will be considered based on the designer accordingly the length of the fuselage will be calculated and at the end it is very important to find out the finest ratio the finest ratio has a direct relation with an minimizing the fuselage zero lift drag okay so uh, you have to 
compare the data with your optimized data arrived in the beginning of your design for large supersonic flights the finest ratio should be around 14 now coming to that mix of subsonic and supersonic flights like a fighter f-15 or other fighter aircrafts the finest ratio should be 8 to 10 okay to minimize the zero lift drag coming to the next you have to remember the length of the fuselage can be fine using the length of the cabin or the size of the engine section or the cargo plus the length of the nose section and the length of the rear section and this last point important point is a circular cross section is recommended for a pressurized cabin to minimize the hoop stress it is very important in a structural point of view now at the end just make a tabular column and discuss your results it is very important to make an CAD diagram of your fuselage design to have a better clarity in your aircraft design so hope you are learning aircraft design effectively so please drop your feedback so i can customize my teaching skills see you soon in the next module infinite design take care stay blessed and thank you so much for watching